So I want to start with you, Christina, what is brand branding for you and what isn't it? Yeah, so I think for me, pretty much it's how I uh, how I represent myself um, and what that what other people think of me and how they see me. Right. Um, so basically, I'm working to kind of cultivate this this persona, which is actually myself. Right. Just kind of uh, putting out my story and representing who I am as a person, you know, who I am as a technologist, as a leader, and pretty much it. I can't, you know, I'm kind of hesitant to say what other people think of me because that I that's kind of out of my control, but I can craft my own story. So for me, it's really uh, the story that I've created for myself and how I've represented myself thus far, uh, whether in person or via social media. Great. Uh, also wanted to throw it over to you, Nick. I know that you're one of the uh, panelists that don't have a podcast. So what is branding for you and what are some of the, the, the ways that it is not? Like, what is branding not? That's a very interesting question because I yeah, probably am the odd person out here in a lot of instances. For example, a lot of people definitely have a social presence, but I really don't have one to the extent where I have no Facebook, no Instagram, no Twitter. For me, those things don't really excite me. But what does excite me is my blog, for example. And when I started that blog, you know, it was just a place. I mean, if you check my first blog that I wrote, uh, I believe in April 2014, I said, you know, this is just a place where I'm putting my thoughts so that I have a repository rather than going to look across different hard drives and USBs and so on. So I just started writing, you know, because I just wanted to have a location for me to, to retrieve my thoughts. But when I knew that my blog was really contributing to the community was when a couple of years after, maybe about two years after, I was doing some research online and I ran into a webcast that John Strand had done. Now I had only met John Strand one time before, actually I only met him once and that is when I took his class in Florida in 2014. And two years after something like that, you know, he is doing a podcast and he's referencing my blog. I'm like, yeah, something is really interesting here because Firstly, he did not even know how to say the name of the blog. He did not know if it was Security Nick or Security Nick, right? But he said, you know, it's, we want to see more like this, you know, more kind of stuff like this in the industry. And to me personally, that was the moment I felt that, man, this blog is really contributing. And I'm actually doing something that is helping people. And from that day on, I just continued, you know, writing. And even up to today, I mean, like I have stuff in draft right now that I have to put out. And, you know, that is what motivates me. Similarly, I referenced the book and you know it's not really that I got up to write the book. I actually was working on a couple of, the first book, I was working on a couple of blog posts because you know we had some new entry uh, level analysts that come into our organization, specifically two young ladies. And I wanted to get them up to speed. So I started writing a couple of articles and posts on the blog. But when I showed them, they said, no, Nick, you're better off putting this together in a book. And believe it or not, that is exactly how the book was born. It's just, you know, the thoughts I was putting down for a blog, they recommended the book. And the rest, as they say, is history. But for me personally, my brand is more about how I can help other people. One of the things I'm responsible for at my work is working with colleges for a co-op, some boot camps and internships. And believe me, those are the things that excite me because seeing the next group of security analysts, security specialists, cybersecurity professionals come up and think, you know, for me to be able to say, man, I was able to influence that person, not control or dictate, but influence that personal direction. That is what brings joy to me, not necessarily being on the Facebook or the Twitter or any of these things. Excellent, excellent. Uh, wanted to kick it over to you, Alyssa. I feel like you have your own unique way of looking at your brand uh, and being an advocate for yourself in many different ways from writing books to also uh, you know, all the other things you're doing with uh, video. Uh, what are, what is brand to you? I feel like it's this expansive topic that maybe encompasses quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, the execution of it is, but I mean, so let's talk about, I mean, the question was what isn't brand brand is, your, your personal brand is not this thing, right? Like everybody uh, that has seen me has probably run into my logo somewhere and some are familiar with like the dragon unicorn. That's usually a part of it too. That's just stuff that supports it. But branding, when we talk about personal branding, to me, what that means is it's all about legacy, right? How do I authentically present myself to the world in a way that people are going to remember me for who I actually am? And so it, it's finding that thing about yourself. A, a colleague of mine 
um, Phil Garbashek always, uh, uh, yeah, I think he has even a book by this title, or at least he mentions it. What's your weird? You know, what is that mm-hmm. thing about you that makes you unique or makes you stand out? And then embracing that and bringing that to the world. But it's all about, you know, to Christina's point, maybe not specifically what people think of you, but that legacy that you build for yourself. And so personal branding is all about how do I, you know, what is the thing that I want people to understand about who I authentically am? And then how do I deliver that to the world in a way that people remember it? And then all the things with like, you know, logos and, and podcasts and all the different stuff that we do that helps spread that word. That's just supporting that brand that we're trying to build of ourselves. Absolutely. And I like the fact that you mentioned legacy and legacy is something that Chris talks about all the time and he looks at himself as a leader. um, And that's part of the legacy and impact that he wants to leave on the industry. But Chris, I wanted to get your perspective on brand, what it is and what it isn't. So they say good artists borrow, great artists steal. And I'm gonna have to steal both from Christina and Alyssa because (laughs) I mean, it's really two parts of the same coin. I feel like the beginning of it of what brand is brand for all intents and purposes is kind of like your environment's reaction to who you are, but it really starts with that character. Who are you as a person? And then what is the reception of the folks that are in your life? So what is that actual impact that you're making in your community, in your neighborhood? What is that impact you make on a person? That is really what brand is. And so if you start with the character, if you start with something you, 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 enter the world with the best of intentions and you sharpen the tools to make as much of an impact as you can, that's when you start to build a brand that you can be proud of. Couldn't agree more. And I wanted to finally kick it over to you, Jarek. I know that you're doing quite a bit. Your, your journey is evolving and you've, you're looked at as a leader in our industry. Uh, what, I guess, from the perspective of brand, let's take it a step further. When it comes to like your, your brand of leadership, what, is it and what isn't it for you? Uh, great question. So my brand of leadership specifically is unwavering authenticity. I don't want people to see what people think I should be and people see exactly who I am. I ask hard questions. I start off with things, saying things like this may not be a popular opinion, but this is my opinion. And I really have a willingness to tackle conversations and issues that people don't necessarily embrace. And and for me, your brand is the way people see you, the way people know you. And that's based off of how you promote yourself. That's based off of your experiences. It's based off of your passions. And ultimately it's not about how many people know you, right? So you can have a brand to a small number of people or a brand to a large number of people. So your last question around what is a brand not, it's not a popularity contest. Absolutely. And it's not, it can feel like it is, especially as we use platforms like LinkedIn and Twitter, there's going to be pushback when you are advocating for yourself or the things that you believe in. And this is often an uncomfortable situation that I'm sure all of the panelists have found themselves in. And there are things that we have to do to either overcome it or stray away from it. But I think kind of pushing into the uncomfortable, uncomfortable, uncomfortable aspects, pushing into the obstacles is really the way to promote change amongst ourselves and amongst our community.